This video is about planning for health and personal care in case of incapacity for end of life and other support needs. My name is Joanne Taylor. I'm the Executive Director and Registrar of NIDIS. This presentation has basic information. It is not legal advice. We have other videos and materials that cover various aspects of personal planning. NIDIS is a BC-wide, non-profit charitable organization established in 1995 by other community groups, including the All Summer Society of British Columbia, the Council of Senior Citizens of BC, and Disability Alliance. Those groups were involved in a grassroots law reform of adult guardianship, and out of that reform came the Representation Agreement Act and healthcare consent legislation. NIDIS was set up to be a resource on the new legislation and to provide education and assistance. We also offer a registry service to help communicate important information and documents. Our name, NIDIS, is Latin for NEST, a symbol of support and safety. We wish this could be a short two-minute video, but we don't have general understanding yet of these topics. There has been no systematic education of professionals in any sector or community groups or the public about the concept of personal planning or the Representation Agreement Act. And misunderstandings or lack of knowledge leads to poor practice in some cases and hypothetical problems. And unlike with signing hospital consent forms, which are about very specific procedures, what we're talking about here is much broader and about quality of life. And so it is important to learn more about it, to uh, think about it and discuss it with others in order to help yourself and help others when they have to, if they have to use these documents with third parties. What are we talking about? Uh, well, estate planning is about making arrangements for after death. And we want to put the spotlight on personal planning, which is about making arrangements for while you're alive. And personal planning call, covers four life areas, health care, personal care, legal, and financial. We don't live our life in separate compartments, but there are specific laws, policies, institutions related to those four areas. This chart shows some of the uh, tasks or decisions that might fall under health and uh, personal care which is the focus of this video. You'll see that there's also a container called advanced care planning attached to health. Advanced care planning is the term that the Ministry of Health and Health Authorities are using to encourage people to plan for health care matters. However, it isn't only about health or the care system. So we're using the term personal planning to uh, th think and plan more broadly. And it's important to plan for all four life areas. We have a separate vis video that discusses planning for legal and financial affairs uh, because financial resources are going to be important for determining eligibility or subsidy even for health and personal care uh, services. Because of the law reform, we have two paths for personal planning in British Columbia. We have the future path, the traditional path, for adults who understand the nature and effect of their planning documents at the time they are making them. The need help for today path is for adults whose capability to understand the nature and effect is in question at the time of making their legal planning documents. This may apply to adults with a disability from birth or childhood, or adults with advanced dementia, or who've had a serious stroke. There are different legal documents depending on the path. Here we're talking specifically about the health and personal uh, care life areas and there's a representation agreement 
Section 9, it's called, for the future path that covers health and personal care. And the representation agreement, Section 7, covers some health and personal care matters. We're going to look, first of all, at the future path. And a couple of examples. John is uh, relatively healthy, although he has some stress as a caregiver. And thinking about what could happen to him, it'll have an effect on him and also the person that he supports. And who could make sure his wishes are carried out if he has an accident uh, or a stroke. And Cynthia, she's scheduled for major surgery, so it's on her mind to make sure she's got documents in place in case uh, something happens. The representation agreement, Section 9, and Section 9 just refers to a part of the the Representation Agreement Act that says what authorities a representative can have. So under Section 9, they can have the most comprehensive uh, authorities for health and personal care. That document covers the most for those areas. And it includes authority to refuse life-supporting health care. You must understand the nature and effect of an RA9 at the time of making it, because we're talking about the future path. You must be 19 years or older. 19 is the age of adulthood in British Columbia. You do not need to consult with a legal professional to make an RA9, and NIDAS has legal forms that you can use. We have some alerts for you uh, when you're thinking of health care and uh, some of the uh, tips um, uh, that you might take into consideration. So we have videos on other topics like expressing wishes that don't backfire, uh, understanding physician's orders because it can be quite confusing and misleading, things like the DNR, no CPR form, the medical scope of treatment most form. And we have a review of the BC Government My Voice booklet and the BC Government Representation Agreement forms. If you are on the future path and you want to learn more about uh, planning for health and personal care and find uh, the RA9 form, You'll go to the NIDAS website, and on the home page, you click on the middle photo or heading, Planning for the Future Path. What if someone's mental capability is in question? Let's look at the Help for Today path. And here we have a couple of examples. Mary's dementia has progressed. It's no longer a recent diagnosis or an early stage. She's in a later stage. Albert had a serious stroke. We don't know if the brain damage is permanent. He made a will, but he's not dead. So who's going to be able to uh, help him? <laughs> Uh, with his wishes and make sure he can have access to uh, health care and personal care that's appropriate. Mary and Albert do not meet the capability requirements for making an RA9. What can they do to get help from those who know and care about them? Well, that's where the Representation Agreement, Section 7. Section 7 outlines uh, some aspects of the four life areas, including minor and major health care and personal care, for people who are on the need help today path. The representation agreement section 7 has a different view of capability than other laws or documents, such as the representation agreement section 9 where you have to understand the nature and effect. For the RE7, there is no specific criteria that everyone has to meet. And even if a doctor says uh, Mary or Albert are not 
uh, competent, uh, that this does not prevent them, Mary or Albert, from making a representation agreement section 7. They don't have to be assessed in order to make it, but if a doctor were to say that they weren't capable of making their own healthcare decisions, that would be a signal that um, they need help making an RE7 so people who know and care about them will be able to help talk to the doctor with them uh, and help their wishes to be honored. Here's Sam. Sam has a developmental disability and he needed elective surgery and he, the surgeon said he could not understand to give or refuse informed consent for the surgery. But Sam's representative will be able to help him with that and other health care issues or personal care issues as they come along, including at end of life. So that's how a representation agreement, Section 7, can help someone who has a developmental disability, a disability from birth or childhood. You may have noticed that um, the example of the representation agreement, Section 7, that we showed you covered all four life areas. However, if there is an existing authority for financial and legal affairs, then the adult would make an RA7 just for health and personal care. So it, it's, it, you can kind of think of it as, as building blocks and just break, and breaking it down into the necessary life areas. So for example, let's say Mary has an existing enduring power of attorney, so that's an authority for legal and financial affairs, but an enduring power of attorney doesn't cover health and personal care. Mary's capability is now in question so she can't make the representation agreement section 9, but she can make the representation agreement section 7 to cover uh, minor and major health care and personal care matters. In Sam's case, his financial and legal affairs are managed by the public guardian and trustee, a government official. So that authority is in place for legal and financial affairs. He made a representation agreement for health and personal care. We call it an RA7H and P to uh, indicate that it's covering those two life areas because he had a gap. On the other hand, if there's no existing authority for financial and legal affairs, like Albert, or it's no longer effective, maybe Mary's enduring power of attorney only named her spouse and they died, so she has a gap again, or maybe the pub Sam was able to discharge the public guardian and trustee's authority. So in those cases where there isn't anything in place to cover legal and financial affairs, then the adult could make a representation agreement, Section 7, for all four life areas. We call it an RA7 all. And this is for people on the Need Help Today path whose mental capability is in question. They can have a plan uh, with people who know and care about them and who will be able to advocate for their wishes. So to find more information and the Representation Agreement Section 7 forms for those situations, you can click on the first heading uh, for someone who has a disability from birth or childhood like Sam. Uh, for someone like Mary or Albert, you click on the third photo or heading. Other information and resources? Well, it's important to know what's not covered. 
uh, by the representation agreement. No one, including a representative, can have authority on your behalf for medical assistance in dying or euthanasia. That's something under the uh, current federal legislation you would have to request while you're mentally competent and it has to be administered while you are mentally incompetent. Uh, no one can make decisions or counsel you about sterilization for non-therapeutic purposes and that would apply obviously to younger people with uh, disabilities. And no one has authority to refuse treatment or placement decisions if you are vo involuntarily committed under the Mental Health Act. However, having a representation agreement can help avoid the need to use the Mental Health Act in the first place. What if you don't have a plan in place for health and personal care and likely a lot of people watching this video don't have a representation agreement in place. Well, if you are incapable of consent and someone needs to decide, then the health care provider, uh, which is, you know, often going to be uh, uh, somebody in the hospital who doesn't know you, they're going to select from a ranked list in the law. A spouse is ranked first there's no spouse, then it, they move down to the next ranked person, the next of kin, but again, they have to go in a particular order. And if there's no, uh, no one related by birth or adoption, then a close friend, uh, according to the definition of the law, or an in-law. A staff at the Public Guardian Trustee's Office is the last resort for making your health care decisions. And this person who's selected from the ranked list is called a temporary substitute decision maker. So the word temporary is important. It's just for that particular decision. They don't have as much authority as a representative and they have different duties. So obviously we're trying to encourage people to plan. Um, and But making your documents is only one part of the uh, process. And we have information on all aspects. And if you go to the website and the blue menu bar, there's a heading called My Documents. And under that, you'll see that there's other uh, topics or headings related to other aspects of the process. And we have resources on topics related to health and personal care. For example, it's important that the person you name in your representation agreement knows their duties and responsibilities as well as their authorities. And we have a fact sheet on that. We have lots of information on health care consent. We have uh, information organized around what are some of the things related to end of life. And that's uh, on the website under the information tab. And then you'll find more videos as well as other resources like presentations under the Get Help heading. And don't forget to register the completed uh, agreement. And you can see videos about the uh, registry, about connecting the right information to the right people at the right time. Here's a screenshot from the NIDIS website. And there's a tab for the registry that gives you information. And in the right sidebar, you can click on the link and go to the separate secure registry site. What to do next? Well. Here are the steps to action. First of all, you need to determine the path that you are uh, interested in uh, for yourself, the future path, or if you're helping someone, the need help today path. Click on the correct photo at the NIDAS homepage. Read and discuss the information with others. Make the representation agreement. No legal professional is required. The forms on the website come with instructions. 
register your completed document and make sure that your representative alternate knows about NIDAS and the website so they can get information when they have to use the agreement to help you. Thank you for joining us. Please visit the website and watch other videos.